as you worked uh, for the FBI or maybe the CIA or for the Treasury Department, the IRS uh, or Homeland Security, we work for some uh, agency within the federal government. You qualify for what is called FEHB, which simply stands for Federal Employee Health Benefits. And so you have some very unique options for you whenever you go on Medicare. So let's go through those options. There's actually four of them. Welcome to Medicare School Daily, where we help you understand Medicare, save money, avoid making costly mistakes, and above all else, get the most out of your Medicare benefits. Now, today's topic is exclusively for those that are uh, retired from the federal government. Option number one is you can choose to, uh, to enroll when you're eligible for Medicare, enroll into Medicare A only. In other words, you're not required to take B. Now, you're the only group of people that don't have to take B. Everybody else, other than retired federal workers, have to take Part B. But if you decide you're not going to take B, because you don't want to pay the premium, you can enroll in Part A only on the hospital site. So what's going to happen when those bills are processed, here's the way it's going to work. On an inpatient bill, which means you're admitted to the hospital or you're in a skilled nursing facility, what will happen, because you have A only, Medicare will pay first and Medicare will take the balance of that and actually send it to your federal employee health benefit. Whoever your insurance company is will then be the secondary payer. Now, when it comes to outpatient, that's going to be different because you have A only, you don't have B, and B is the outpatient side. So on the outpatient side, uh, everything you do on an outpatient basis or have a, a doctor services, then if you have FEHB only. In other words, Medicare is not going to pay anything. FEHB is going to pay first. And whatever your co-pays are, your, your deductibles, co-insurance, then that then will be sent to you. And then you will be responsible for that. And again, this is something that you can do. Now, a word of caution here is that if you take A only and you don't take B now at 65 and you want to pick up B at a later date, uh, you can do so, but you can only do so at the first quarter of any year, so January 1 to March 31st, and for every year you went without B when you were Medicare eligible, they will add a 10% penalty to your Part B premium. So if you want to pick up B in four years, you'll pay a 40% penalty added to the Part B. But this is one option. Now, the second option you have is actually to enroll in Medicare Parts A and B. In other words, you're going to have Medicare become the first payer on everything. So all the bills, inpatient, outpatient, doctor-related services, Medicare is going to be the first payer, uh, and then they'll take the balance of that and they'll send it to FEHB and they will pay second and almost always, not always, but almost always, then in that scenario, you have pretty much 100% coverage. So Medicare pays first, FEHB is going to pay second. Now, the reminder here, you are going to have to pay your Part B premium. Uh, this year, it's 2022. The Part B premium is $170.10 a month. So that's really what you got to decide. Is it worth that $170.10 a month to put Medicare in the first payer position uh, instead of you having to be the first payer position like you would if you had A only. So then option number three, and that is to enroll in A and B and get a supplemental plan. In other words, just like the rest of the Medicare population, uh, you don't have to be covered by your group plan, your FEHB plan. You actually can get out of the FEHB system and you can enroll in a Medicare and get a supplemental plan. Most people, they are buying G plans or N plans. Those are the uh, two uh, common plans. And sometimes it makes financial sense to do that. So if you do decide to enroll into a supplemental plan, what's going to happen? All the bills are first going to go to Medicare because you're enrolled in A and B, and they'll take that balance and send it to the supplemental uh, plan. So instead of that balance being sent to FEHB because you have gotten out of FEHB, it's going to go to the supplemental company that you have chosen based upon the plan that you purchase. All right, so they pay second. Now, one of the issues with this you've got to be comfortable with is because if you take a supplemental plan, uh, those are those 10 letters, A, B, C, D, F, G, K, L, M, or N, any of those 10 standardized supplemental plans, when, you, when that happens, you actually have to sign a statement saying that you're uh, permanently terminating your FEHB, uh, FEHB benefits. You can't go back into that system. And so we've had plenty of people do that. Uh, they, they felt like it was their best option. But again, if you do that, you're going to be sure that you have peace knowing that they, you can never go back into the FEHB system uh, once you have uh, signed the paperwork terminating FEHB because you went on a supplemental plan. All right. And then lastly, uh, you can enroll in a Medicare A&B and get an Advantage plan. These are private health insurance companies. Uh, they're called replacement plans. And again, this is uh, an option available to you. Now, when you do that, here's the way the bills would work. Uh, you would be issued one card by the uh, insurance uh, company, the Advantage company. And so uh, you're going to pay your copay, and then that balance of that bill is going to be given to that private health insurance company. So you have uh, some small copays, and then the balance, the majority of the bill is going to be paid by the Advantage plan. 
right? Now, if you decide you want to be in an Advantage plan, and just in the normal market Advantage plans, you don't have to terminate like we would if we went a supplemental plan. You actually only have to suspend. In other words, you're taking those FEHB benefits and all those options and setting them to the side, but it's not forever decision. It's an annual decision. So if you decide, I like the Advantage plan, I'm going to stay on it, uh, then you keep doing that. But if you come to a place and age or health related, where you say, now nah, I think I really would rather return to uh, original Medicare with my, uh, my uh, FEHB benefits, you can pick that up any year during Medicare's open enrollment, uh, which is October 15th to December 7th. So again, it's not, it's not permanent. It is just simply a temporary suspension. And then you can review that on an annual basis. All right. So if you're retired from the federal government, you have these particular four options and you need to decide which is best for you. Hey, thanks so much for watching the video, and I do hope that it was helpful. Now, if you feel like you need to learn more about Medicare to make sure you're making the right Medicare decision, really the best way and the easiest way to do that is to go to MedicareSchool.com. That's MedicareSchool.com, and you'll be given the opportunity to click on uh, Get the Free Workshop. We call that the Essentials Workshop, and I do all the teaching, and there you'll learn all the ins and outs of Medicare to make sure that you have an accurate and thorough understanding of how Medicare works. The second thing you can do is click where it says Talk to a Medicare Guide, and there you can actually set up a time where you can discuss your situation with a Medicare guy. They'll explain all your options and they'll actually even walk you through the enrollment process as well if that's what you need to do. And so go to MedicareSchool.com, uh, watch the workshop or talk to a Medicare guide. It would be our privilege to assist you further.